Ginger Bill. His mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. As Chief Ranger, I like to keep right up to date with everything that goes on, and I get a lot of very much appreciated help from my friends. I'm very fortunate this way. Maybe it's because all the people in the district know that we're trying to do a sincere job. One of my friends is Tad Coates, who owns and runs the barge line on the Shady River. The Shady River is becoming more important every year as a main line for freight, especially since there's so much national defense effort going on here in the district. Uncle Sam is making great underground facilities of which I'm not at liberty to discuss. But the Shady River figures in as a most important artery for barges loaded with cargoes of every description. Tad invited Stumpy and I down to Central City to see a new towboat. Well, here's Central City. Yep, right where it's always been. Say, uh, what's so special about a towboat? Ain't they all the same? You see one, you see them all. You're in for an education, old-timer. I am? You sure are. If Tad asked us down here to show us what I think he's going to show us. Hey, I thought this was a secret. <laughs> it's a semi-secret. Well, now if that ain't one for the cake. I've heard a semi-trailer, semi-circle, semi-final, semi-fluid, semi-conscious, semi-double, semi-dome. But I ain't never heard of a semi-secret. <laughs> a semi-secret is a half-secret, Stumpy. How can a secret be a secret if it's a half-secret? <laughs> okay, forget it. <laughs> I know that I'd tuck you out sooner or later. <laughs> hey, we're here already. See, what's that? That's Tad's surprise. His new towboat. Towboat? Looks more like one of them pocket battleships to me. Now, how can you carry a battleship in your pocket? Oh, a wise guy, huh? <laughs> Come on, get out. We'll find Tad and look at this giant of the river. Well, how do you like this towboat of mine, fellas? It's a beauty, Tad, a real beauty. What kind of a handle did you fasten onto it? A handle? Oh, oh, you mean a name? Yep. I named it the River Giant. Very fine, Tad. And man, it is a giant. Yes, this towboat weighs 350 ton. All at one time? <laughs> yes, all at one time, Stumpy. Give us more of the vital statistics, will you, Tan? All right. The River Giant has five decks, ten rudders, four diesel engines that generate 8,500 horsepower. Whee! That's a lot of horses, sonny, a lot of horses. <laughs> you said it, Stumpy. But the River Giant is going to need all those horses to push an integrated tow up the river. No! Wait a minute, young fella. Wait a minute. Now what did I say wrong? You said this towboat is going to push a tow up the river. How can a towboat push a tow? Ain't a towboat supposed to pull the tow? <laughs> it looks like he's got you this time, Dad. Uh, I, I know it sounds peculiar to say a towboat pushes its load of barges rather than tows it. But uh, the truth of the matter is that the tow can be handled and maneuvered with pinpoint accuracy by pushing it rather than by pulling it. Does that clear things up, old-timer? <laughs> Come on, Stumpy. Stop pulling his leg. <laughs> okay, young feller. Now stop making you think I don't know what's going on on the river. Well, I've seen many a towboat pushing instead of pulling. <laughs> Feller's got to have a little fun, you know. Yeah. Say, how much 
much did this River Giant cost? A million dollars. <laughs> How much? One million dollars. Where'd you get a million dollars? Your old uncle didn't leave you that much. <laughs> Unc didn't leave me a million dollars. And this towboat won't really be mine for many years. <laughs> now you have got my puzzle. Here, look at this plate on the bulkhead. What's it say? Property of the Central City National Bank under Equipment Trust Certificate. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, it means that the Central City National Bank lent me the million dollars to buy the River Giant. In fact, several banks are working together on this. It's kind of like a big mortgage. I have to pay interest and some of the loan back every year until the whole thing's paid off. You see, old-timer, not many companies or individuals have a million dollars that they can put down cash on the barrel head. That is, especially to buy a lot of expensive equipment. So they borrow the money, and then the company pays off the principal and interest. <laughs> yeah, Bill, you was right before. I was right before when? When you said I was going to get an education. Whew. This has been a rough course. Say, uh, how about relaxing on the River Giant while I take you for a cruise down the river and back? Do I have to get one of them there trust certificates? <laughs> no. All you have to do is get on board and we'll get underway. Good. I need a rest after all that education. Say, Stumpy, how about taking the wheel for a while? See how easily she handles. Nope. Nope, why not? Bill did. I sure did. River Giant handles like a dream. Nope. Why not? I ain't about to try and steer a million dollars. I might run it into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old timer, <laughs> I never cease to admire your sense of humor. Well, you better keep your eye on the road, Sonny. I mean the river. Looks like someone's coming against you with some barges. Hey, he sure is. Let's give him a couple of blasts. <laughs> Mark's a good man, always on the job, always thinks, and he gives you eight hours of work for every eight hours of pay. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a pretty good-sized tow he's pushing. That sure is, Bill. Ten barges with a million gallons of gasoline in each barge. Uh-huh. I thought those were tank barges. Ten million gallons of gasoline? Great day in the morning. <laughs> we don't fool around, Stumpy. One of those barges costs $85,000. We make them work night and day, and every day we can. Whew. One of those buckets costs $85,000? Oh, they earn their keep and then some. Mark's pushing an acre and a half of cargo up the river. That reminds me. Better turn the river giant around and head back upriver. Some turn you made, Sonny. Does this thing bend in the middle? <laughs> no, Stumpy, but with ten rudders and four screws, we can turn her pretty well. Uh, screws? Propellers to you, old timer. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Each screw works independently, as well as together. Yes, sir, e Bob. You named this here towboat right. It really is a river giant. Everything's put to bed. Today's work is done. We sure enjoyed ourselves, Ted. Many thanks. That's right. This was fun. And educational at the same time. Oh, don't mention it. I'd be glad to have you come back anytime. Well, Ted, we gotta run now. It's getting late. Oh, no, you don't. You fellas are staying for dinner. Oh, we really can't. Uh, Stumpy, what's the matter with you? Kick my shin. I ought to kick you harder. Don't you know who the cook is around here? Oh, <laughs> all right, you old rascal. <laughs> You've got your mouth set for Mrs. Murphy's cooking. So I might as well agree to stay. Yep, that's right. 
My stomach hears Mrs. Murphy's voice calling, Come and get it. <laughs> it's about that time, too. Let's go get washed up. Where's Mark and his uh, toe? Oh, he's gone up the river to Naughty Pine, Bill. Without his supper? There's a complete galley on both towboats to feed the crew. They get good food. When do they rest? Well, let's see. They won't get to Naughty Pine until late. Then they lay over and start back with another tow. We switch pilots here as the tows go by. Tomorrow's my day to break in the river giant. Taking a 16 barge tow down to Junction City. Mm, that ought to keep you out of mischief. <laughs> you said it. Well, let's go have dinner. <laughs> What's the matter, old-timer? Lost your appetite? Lost it? I think I got rigor mortis of the stomach. <laughs> How can you have that, Stumpy? My stomach's so full I can't move. When you can't move, you got rigor mortis. <laughs> well, that's only when you're dead. Well, that's what I think I did. You did what? Killed my stomach with Mrs. Murphy's good, delicious food. <laughs> Don't let him fool you, Dad. He's got room for more apple pie. Don't you be fooled, Sonny. The only part of the apple pie I could get down right now might be one apple seed. <laughs> oh, Stumpy, you killed me. Oh, don't say that. Say, by the way, fellas, if that alarm bell goes off suddenly, don't head for the fallout shelter. Something new? Yes, Bill. The bell's wired to the radio. Quite frankly, I got tired of constantly watching for the red light to go on when I'm in the house. It's awful noisy, so don't drop your teeth when it goes off. Well, Ted... Uh, beginning to look like us two stuffed birds are going to be very poor after-dinner guests. <laughs> if you said it, young feller. Uh, that makes three of us. I do it every evening after dinner. A catnap is a good thing for cats and people. Yep. Uh. <laughs> oh, there she goes. <laughs> oh, what a time to have to get up and move. Where's the radio? It's out in the office, Bill. I'll answer it. Be right back. Well, that's fine by me. Yep. Me too. Uh, yes, Mark. Uh, what's up? Dad, I'm on fire. You're on fire? Makes sense, man. What's on fire? A barge. A barge is on fire. I don't know what to do. Help me, Dad. Cut it loose. Cut it loose. I'm on my way with the river giant. Cut the burning barge loose. Do you read me, Mark? Mark! Mark! Stumpy. Get down to the river giant and call the Naughty Pine fireboat. Yes, sir. Bill, we've got to move fast. Mark and his boys may have to jump ship and 10 million gallons of gas is loose on this river. Ranger One, the fireboat. Come in, Casey. Casey to Ranger One. We are proceeding downriver at full speed. We can see the fire. What's it look like? The fire is presently confined to the front barges. Maybe it's only one barge. I can't tell yet. Oh, we can see the fire now. Uh, your orders are to come alongside the river giant and throw a supply of asbestos suits overboard. They need to cover us with water while we go aboard Mark's boat, try to cut loose the burning barges. Or barge, as the case may be. Acknowledge. Casey to Bill. Uh, I read you loud and clear. Got your speed, Tad. So the fireboat can come alongside. Right. Stumpy, you see any signs of life aboard the other boats? Yeah, they, they didn't jump ship. They're still on board, but they're all at the stern. As soon as we get the suits, we'll go aboard the other boat. Yes, sir. We better make it soon, because that sure is going to be a hot bucket before long. <laughs> I'm afraid, Bill. I'm afraid. I can't help it. Get me off of here before it blows up. Get me off. Mark, can you handle the river giant? Yes, I can handle it. But I gotta get off of here. I gotta get off of here before it blows up. Get up to the wheel and tell Tad I need him. Yes, sir. Right away. What's your plan, Sonny? I got the axes, Stumpy? Yep. You better get cutting soon, too, or that barge is gonna blow. Let's go, fellas. 
I'll back the tow off as soon as you cut the front barges loose. Both barges? Yes. The heat will start the other one any minute. Let's go. Bill? Yeah? I'm going to back away and let the burning barges go down river. That's all I can do right now. I can catch them with the river giant. Right. Come on, old-timer. Let's get rid of the fiery furnace. It's a hot, hot, hot one, young feller. Right. Here comes the fireboat alongside. What now, Bill? Can you catch the barges and blow the hatch covers off to release the pressure? We can give it the old college try. Uh, Casey. Yes, sir. Stay as far away as you can and still do the job with your high-pressure nozzle. If the hatch covers start to buckle, turn back. That's an order. Aye, aye. I'm going back aboard the River Giant. Stay with your radio. Aye, aye. You think we can catch those barges? Tad wants to show off his river giant. Here's his chance. Now, just in case we don't make it, you get on the radio and have the Central City Police evacuate the riverfront. Good idea, Bill. Hard telling where them two million gallons of burning gas are gonna land. Bill, I know you've got a lot on your mind right now, but I've got to talk to you. Go ahead, Mark. I've got time to listen. Well, this will only take a couple of minutes. I'll be done before we catch up with the barges. Go ahead. Say what's on your mind. Bill, am I a coward? What makes you think you are, Mark? Well, I panicked when the barges caught fire and left the wheel and almost jumped ship. I was scared to death. Scared stiff. Was this the first time you've had a fire like this? Yes, I, I've never had anything happen like this before, but, but you're not answering my question. Am I a coward? Mark. Why do people call the fire department when their house is on fire instead of trying to put the fire out by themselves? Well, the fire department has men trained to fight fire and equipment, too. That's the point. I know you wouldn't have panicked if you had been through this experience before or had firefighting training. Boy, that's a load off my mind. But I've still got to prove myself. Let me tell you a secret, Mark. Yes? When I went out to cut the burning barges loose, I was scared to death, too. You, you wouldn't kid me, would you? We're not talking about joking matters. Well, where'd you get the courage and strength to go out and cut the barges loose? When I stand in fear and trembling, I get my help from the Lord. He gives me the strength to do what I am supposed to do. Now, don't look at me, Mark. Don't marvel at my courage and strength. Without the Lord's help, I would have run the other way. Casey, did you get the hatches blown off? Yeah, and we did it without getting ourselves cinched. Good boy. Now try and cover the river giant with water. We're going in and push the second barge up on the riverbank. Uh, what about the first barge, Bill? One hot bucket at a time. Are you ready? Make your move and we'll cover you. All right, Tad. Beach number two bar. Right. Here we go. Wow. You can feel the fierce heat from inside the wheelhouse. Casey, where's the water? We're moving in close now. We'll be in nozzle range in a few seconds. Well, hurry up before we suffocate from the heat. The water's on its way. Good shot. Keep us sprayed until we beach the barge. You can get back and cool off. All right, hold on. We're heading for the beach. Ram it aground with all you've got so it'll stay until it's burned out. Hold tight for the shock. Engines are full astern. Good work, Dad. Now let's 
get out of here and go after the other one. Say, Ed, uh, how are you fellas coming with evacuating the waterfront? Well, we'll have both sides of the river evacuated in about ten minutes, Stumpy. Um, how's it going up there? We beached one barge, but the other one's way ahead of us now. We're chasing it. Yeah. Can you catch it before it reaches us? I don't know. Uh, why? I just found out the mining company is 10,000 pounds of high explosives stored in one of the warehouses right along the water. What's it doing there? I just came in today on a barge. They haven't had time to move it except into a warehouse under guard. You've got to stop that hot barge or boom, Central City will just be a memory. And that's the situation. We got one headache on top of the other. Dad, how much more can you push your engines? I'm at top speed now, Bill, except for a small reserve. Casey, have you got any reserve speed left? None. I'm having trouble even keeping up with you guys. My engines are for pumping water, not for running a speedboat. Stumpy, call for a helicopter on the double. Come on, Mark, we've got work to do. Your asbestos suit tight? Yes. How's yours? Okay. I guess we're ready, Harv. Let's go. Now, do you understand the plan, Mark? Yes. You want to drop this light cable onto the back of the barge so that the copter can pull back and try to slow the barge enough so that the river giant can catch up and then ram it ashore. Right. The pilot will lower me on his winch cable as close as he can. Then I'll throw the hoop of this cable over the stern cleat. I want you to stand by in case I miss the cleat. You pull the cable back up while the copter is maneuvering for another try. Uh, do you understand the plan, Harv? Yes, sir. Now, there's the barge. Well, the river giant has about five miles to go to catch the barge, and it's about 15 miles to Central City from where the barge is now. All right, we haven't got time to jaw. Lower me when I give the signal. No, you don't. This is my job. Huh? What are you talking about, Mark? Like you said, there isn't time to jaw. Lower away and pay out the thin cable. Okay. You're on your way. Bill, are you sure it's all right? Does he know what he's doing? Will he be strong enough to throw the cable over the cleat? Don't worry about him, Harv. He is drawing his strength from the unlimited source. What? Are you sure? Well, I ought to know. I've been looking at him almost every day for nigh under 15 years. <laughs> must be Mark. But what's Mark doing on the cable? I don't know. But it must be all right. The copter's moving over the stern of the barge. He's going to drop the hoop on the cleat now, any second. Why, that heat must be terrific. You can't stay there for long, Stumpy. He dropped it. Yeah. Well, looks like they're circling for another try. They'd better make it this time. We're running out of miles. What do you say, Bill? Is, is he all right, or should we bring him up? He's okay. I just got the sign from him. Look, I don't recommend more than one more time, Bill. It's murder. The updrafts are bad. I know. Try and uh, hold him steady. I believe he'll make it. Oh, I'm glad I'm not there. Boy, without that asbestos suit, he'd fry. <laughs>
push this boat, Ted. All you got. We're wide open now. They're going in again. They've got to make it this time. They've got to. The copter is over the stern cleat. What's taking so long for the drop? He'll fly. Mark seems to be taking measure and aim. He dropped it. Good shot. <laughs> They're hooked. Now they can slow the barge down enough so as we can catch it. Look, Stumpy, it's working. We're gaining like crazy. Stand by and hold on tight. I'm going to beach that barge with all engines wide open. Thanks, Mark. You did a fantastic job. Thanks, boss, but Bill and his men are the ones who deserve all the thanks, not me. Nonsense. It took a lot of courage and strength to do what you did. Well, it wasn't my strength and courage. Well, what do you mean it wasn't yours? I'm not joking. The Lord gave me the strength and courage to do that job. Uh, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand all of it either, but Bill does. He's the man that told me the secret. I'm sure he can fill us both in on some of the details. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, see you again next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill is produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago. This is a Moody Radio Network production. Thank you.